Hi, Thomas Halbert here with the NBA War Room. Today, we're gonna answer your questions in the Q&A for NBA. War Room, baby, yeah! It's a place for winners. Our first question is from Timur in Moscow. Timur says, help settle an argument I'm having with my colleagues. Which school is the better brand for entrepreneurship, Stanford or Harvard? If you're not already an entrepreneur, getting an MBA degree is probably not going to make you into an entrepreneur. That's right, an MBA is a great place to get leadership education, business knowledge, great place to network, great place to do what you already know how to do well, maybe even better, but it's not a good place to say, oh, I am a, I'm a plumber and I'm going to become an entrepreneur. So from that point of view, if you're not already an entrepreneur or you don't already have entrepreneurial experience, you're probably not gonna get that much better at any school you go to. Number two, which is better, Harvard or Stanford? The better question is, which school do you wanna go to? Where do you fit? Because they're both great brands, right? Right. Okay, so let's talk about who do you wanna work for? Let's say you have two employers, Satan and Jesus, and you're saying, Thomas, who should I work for, Satan or Jesus? They're both top brands, right? but you already have a preference. So why don't you go work for the one that you wanna work for rather than squabbling about which brand is better. Go where you fit, all right? Okay, thanks, two more. Life hack fact. NBA life hack fact number 12, FOMO and the NBA. Are you getting an MBA because you're afraid of missing out? That's kind of a dumb reason to get an MBA. Okay. Let's think about it. Your friends are getting an MBA. Your friend has already applied. Your friend lives in, in the UK. You got a friend in New York. He's getting an MBA there. You got a friend in Singapore. Should you get an MBA? Will you be a loser if you don't get one? Let me tell you, you're not going to be a loser if you don't get an MBA. You're going to be a loser if you do what other people think instead of what you think. That's right. You're going to be a loser if you don't do what's good for you, if you're going to do what other people say is good. Are you ready for the war room? Our next question is from Evgenia in St. Petersburg. She says, my boyfriend and I want to apply to the same MBA program. Will being a couple affect our chances of being admitted? The answer to that question is maybe. Nobody has ever been admitted to an MBA program as a couple. Everybody is admitted on their own merit. So if you and your boyfriend, if you're both awesome with awesome sauce on it, you can both be admitted. That's a great thing. If you, Evgenia, if you're more awesome than your boyfriend, you don't want to let the boyfriend ruin your chances of getting an MBA. So apply as you like, but if you've got to get it with that guy, beware, because schools don't care. A caveat, that is a special condition. A lot of schools actually like married couples. That's right, they do. Harvard especially has a special soft spot for married couples. Why? Because they see the married couple or the partners as having a better social foundation for their leadership. That's right. Some schools, they prefer uh, single people who are independent and free to act, and other schools, like to have married people because they see the social foundation of a relationship as better for overall performance. So take a look at the materials school you're applying to to see are there any clubs for married people? Are there special events for people who are couples? Or is everything really geared towards single people? For example, some schools like INSEAD will not allow a couple to apply together unless they are married. Other schools, like Stanford, they don't really mind if you're married or not, but the whole program is actually more geared towards single people. 
If you're married, you got a career already going, you know what? Adcom might suggest you apply for the MSX. That's right. That's another a different program at Stanford that's geared toward slightly older, slightly more experienced professionals, most often, who are married. Hey, think about it. Stanford MSX, great program. Check it out. Our next question is from Roman in Moscow. Roman. Roman says, should I go for a European MBA or an MBA based in the USA? Is there really any difference? Roman, you're going to get an MBA in a different country. Why? Because you want not only a better education, you want a different cultural experience. What kind of cultural experience do you want? A lot of people feel that going to Europe is better because it's closer to Russia and you can feel like it's closer to home and the values and the disposition culturally are more like in Russia. That's a fairly good assumption. Uh, however, if you go to the foreign country, you're also going to confront different values. So you got to be prepared for that. Or if you go to England, for example, if you go to LBS, you have to be prepared. You're going to encounter English values. However, you're probably also going to encounter Chinese values. That's right, there's a lot of Chinese students there. Hey, it's an international school, of course. So are you ready for that? That's the important thing. Chinese people in England. Wow, think about that, what that's like. That could be interesting. You could make connections, especially if your business in the future has to do with the Far East. It could be a great place to network. However, Rahman, if you go to the United States, there's one good thing about that that's really different from other places is you can reinvent yourself. You can be a new person completely because they don't care about your stinking spravka. That's right. The Americans, they're more oriented around merit-based performance. You're not who your past is. You are who you are right now, your performance. Do you do well in school? Are you contributing in class? Are you friendly? Are you making connections? That's the person they're going to see. No one's going to say, hey, Roman, you went to the Chmeli Sinelegor School of Agriculture and Mining, and you're worried, perhaps, that people will think you went to a terrible school in Russia. Guess what? Nobody knows about that school. They don't care. They want to see how you are and how you perform right there. And so if you put your heart into it, if you're really into it, and you want to mingle and uh, uh, drop your bags and be someone new, reinvent yourself, that might be a good option to go to the United States. It's great. There are great MBA programs all over the world. Choosing a particular program is just as important as choosing a particular place. Do you want to go to Australia? Do you want to go to Singapore? Do you want to go to England? Do you want to go to Europe? Do you want to go to Switzerland? Do you want to go to California? Do you want to go to New York? These are things that you should consider. When you're choosing a school, you should think not only about the reputation of the school and the program, you should also think about where it's located. That's really important. Uh, the weather, uh, the people, the possibility for networking, the possibility for jobs, all that becomes really important. Maybe you're a big fan of England. You want to go to England because you love uh, British English, because you love their beer, of course, and the gin, of course. So maybe that's the place to go. Maybe you love hot weather, so you want to go to the West Coast in California. Or maybe you don't care at all about that kind of stuff, and you just want to go to a place where you're focused on education, maybe something like uh, Columbia in New York City, where you just have a city around, and you're focused on your, on your school and city life. Hey. These are things you got to think about. When you want to go to a school in America or the United States, you got to think about the temperament of people and the kind of networks you want to make and maybe where you want to end up with your job. So think about that when you're applying. Simple as that. Are American schools better than European schools? Well, of course, the American rankings say that they are. And the European rankings say that the European schools are better. Hey, they're all pretty good. Choose a high-ranked school on the continent or in the United States, and you're gonna do okay. Apply to a lot of schools and have the choice. If you get into more schools, you have more choice. That's the better way to do it, right? Right, it's the war room baby. Life hack fact. Life hack fact number 62. If I go to the USA to get an MBA, can I stay? Wow, what a question. Do you really want to stay? Is that why you're going to get an MBA so you can emigrate, so you can go live in another country? That's the most expensive way 
to go live somewhere else. Go where the money is rather than where you're gonna sit around and do nothing and wait for some opportunity to land in your lap. Chase your opportunities. That's what you should do. Are you ready for the war room? Dimitri in Novosibirsk, that's far away. He says, Thomas, I got my bachelor's degree from Siberia and I work here. Should I move to Moscow and get a master's degree from a better school to prepare for an MBA abroad? Guess what, Dimitri? The world outside of Russia is quite different. They don't understand that in Russia, Moscow is the only place to live. They don't get it. They think if you went to school in Siberia, it's okay because there's plenty of schools in Ohio and there's plenty of schools in Nebraska and they think these are okay. So when you think of you in Siberia going to get your undergraduate degree in Siberia, they don't say, oh my God, he didn't go to Moscow. He must be an idiot. No, they don't think that, only you do. So the good news is you get to drop that stuff and forget about it. If you have a good job, if you're, doing, if you're performing well in your job, what you can do is you can apply. You don't need to get a special better degree from a, a better school in Moscow to apply, especially if it's gonna take up a lot of time and money. Now, if you wanna have a, a career in Moscow anyway, that might be a choice you wanna make because, well, we live in Russia and people think, hey, Moscow is the place to go. St. Petersburg is the place to go. I gotta live in these better cities to get a better job. Okay, no one's gonna argue with that, however, no one's gonna say that if you didn't come from Moscow, you can't get an MBA. So don't think that you're a lesser applicant just because you come from a different place. Actually, that might be more interesting for them. They might be able to find something special and interesting about you because you come from this place where the world is different. Maybe that could be part of your story instead of the boring, tragic story of you being born in a hole in Siberia and walking naked and barefoot all the way to Moscow as a way to prove that you're somehow a Superman and worthy to go to a school. That story is old and dumb. No one wants to hear that story anymore, so don't tell it. Tell your story, it's gonna be great. You're gonna apply and I'm sure they're gonna love you, all right? Our final letter is from Deanna in Ufa. Deanna says, Hi Thomas, I love the war room. Thank you. What do you think? Is there any problem for a Muslim woman to apply for an MBA in the USA? Deanna, believe it or not, when you apply for an MBA in the United States, you will not be a Muslim woman. You will be a Russian from Russia, from the Russian region, competing against other candidates from Russia. That's right. Your whole life you've been a Tatar, your whole life you've been a Muslim woman, but now you're going to be a Russian. And so they're gonna think about that. Will you be the Russian Muslim woman candidate up against the other candidates from Russia? Hey, that might be an advantage actually. You might look like a superstar, someone from outside the box. That could be really cool. Do you have the grades? Do you have the experience? Do you have the leadership qualities that it takes? If you do, you could have a real good chance. Now don't worry about going to America and being a Muslim. America is full of Muslims and they're all going to get an MBA too. And there's plenty of company on any given campus. Do you wanna join the Muslim Women's Society for Business? Chances are very good that the school you wanna to go to has a Muslim business society and a Muslim women's business society and a photography course and a bicycle course and a course in this and course in that. You can do all this stuff there and you don't have to worry about tags and labels. You can just go there and do your thing and it will be great. Be who you are, don't be who they put you in the box as, all right? So if you wanna do what you wanna do and you've got the qualifications to make it, guess what? You're qualified. They'll take you because you're awesome. All right, I'm Thomas Holbert. This has been the MBA Warm Room Q&A for MBA. We'll see you again very soon. Come and get it, baby.